Hey guys, Kana here. Um, just wanted to hop on and let you guys know real quick that this podcast and a few others in the future are going to be recorded on Zoom uh, due to COVID and concerns over the virus. Uh, my full-time job leads me to be around a lot of people who are from all over coming together in small areas. Um, so just out of concern for all the parties involved, I will most likely be doing the majority of these through Zoom uh, for the time being. So if you guys notice a slight drop in audio quality, that's why. I apologize. Hopefully we can get back to normal ones in person soon. But until then, uh, we will be recording them through Zoom. Still will have them up on YouTube. Uh, and nothing's going to change in regards to the schedule. Also, we here at the Small Town Producer Podcast believe that Black Lives do matter. Um, if you guys want to support any of the Black Lives Matter foundations, uh, they still need our support. So uh, if you follow me on any of my social medias, just head on over to my link tree that I have in my bio, and it's the first link to donate. So thank you guys so much, and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everybody uh to another quarantine edition of the small town producer podcast uh joined as always by luke uh you make sure to follow us um i'm beats by kana on every social media and then uh small town music producer is on everything got on audio mac apple spotify whatever we are joined today uh by dre he runs the seven six collective um, which is a big collective of producers who are doing awesome things uh, in the music industry right now. Um, so what's up, man? Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me, man. Yeah, oh, for yeah, sure. we're excited, man. Yeah, this is awesome. So as we mentioned, you are the head of the 7-6 Collective, uh, yeah. which is a big collective of producers. And Luke, you mentioned that you actually met Dre before. Yeah, it was at the eight days recording session. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, like a year uh, ago. Team 208. Yeah, yeah. So we, I didn't even know you were going to show up. That was like the one day I went and you showed up and we chatted a little bit and just kind of hung out. And I mean, there was a lot of people there, so it was oh, yeah, pretty cool. Definitely. But yeah, that was that was pretty cool. And then I, I honestly like forgot to mention to Kena. <laughs> Not that... <laughs> Not that it matters, but yeah, it was cool meeting you in person. But like, I wanted to talk more about some other stuff, and and it was just like, there was, yeah, it was, there was a lot of stuff like going on. on. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good. awesome. Well, that's cool. That's awesome that you guys got to work together on that. That ended up being a pretty cool project. Um, so I guess Dre, let's just start out. Like, what are some of the things that people might know you from? Uh, might have heard of yours. Some of the things you're most proud of. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, I, I think a, a lot of people know me because I, I was kind of like a kind of one of the first producers that I actually knew that was just producing out here in Idaho. Mm -hmm. So uh, I worked with pretty much pretty much everybody as far as like Idaho catalog. Like I think I have songs with like pretty much almost every Idaho artist, you know, just like locally and stuff. Okay. But um, yeah. Let's see. I started I started out here in uh, Jerome, like like the Twin Falls area. So this is kind of where I got my start, you know, producing. So I pretty much know every artist around this area. I'm not too familiar with like uh, Boise artists and stuff, but um, yeah, I got my start we're, here in Twin. Go ahead, I would Luke. say we're kind of familiar with you, at least I am, because I know when I first started looking for other producers and just in Idaho in general, like uh, AC Delgado popped up, you popped up, Marco popped up um yeah. and those were kind of some three major ones that i was like okay i need to like figure out who these guys are working with and, and right working. right so yeah it extends past jerome and twin falls i would say because um in boise i think a lot of people probably a lot of producers in the area have seen your work and, and kind of know what you're at but ha ha who anyone in particular like any artists you're really excited about working with or some projects that have come out that you've been really excited about um, so I'm not, I don't really work locally anymore. I'm more like I work you okay. know, all over the place now, but uh, I work with a lot of people, um, from California. I'm, I'm originally from California. So that's where my, my, uh, 
my sound is really like uh, designated. I work with some dudes out there that are pretty solid. Um, one of them is Jay Anderson. That's my like, primary artist who I work with. And uh, yeah, I mean, him got a lot of stuff coming and, you know, we're just, we're just trying to grow out there. I, I feel like, I don't know, California has got way more of a scene than Idaho, you know, and I feel like I need to expand more because, you know, it's just necessary to do as a producer. So yeah, that's yeah. who I'm working yeah. with right now. So can you talk a little bit then about kind of how you started and then what led you to kind of go through this process of maybe saying like, oh, I've worked with the people from here, you know, I've seen what's here, like I need to go and try to kind of expand who I'm working with. Right. So I, so you're asking like pretty much how I started first. So I, do you want to like, like how I got into producing? Is that kind of what you're asking? Yeah, I guess just kind of your journey of like going, meeting people here, then going beyond even that. Okay. So yeah, I started producing when I was uh, like 12. Um, I wasn't very good. I mean, no one's good when they first started. Producing, <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I was. I started producing when I was twelve. You know, just messing around with the uh, FL, like FL nine or eight. It was like one of the first Dang. FLs, you know. Wow. Um, so I was messing around with that for like four years, and then I got into high school, and I was like, okay, like I'm starting to go somewhere with this, you know. So I started like investing more time in it. So I started just working with, you know, random people at my high school. It was just, you know, kids that were just like part-time rappers or whatever, you know. So I I did that for a little bit. And then it wasn't until I met, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Scaly Waves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I met him. And like from there, just kind of everything just started like happening really fast. I was uh, I was working with him pretty extensively. You know, we, we made like almost a whole project. We have like a whole project together worth of just beats and songs, you know. I mean, it, uh, most of it's not out just because it's like whatever, but uh, I met him, worked with him. And then from there, I kind of just connected with like, you know, all the other Idaho artists. And that was, that's pretty much it. Ever since then, I've just been working, working, you know, and just getting out there and stuff like that. Awesome. Okay. So um, you've worked then with the Idaho artists you've worked then with the California artists or wherever, you know, all these other artists are from, what is kind of something that you've seen that um, you would say that more small town artists, like the ones here in Idaho, what do they need to be doing that you're, that they're not doing? Like you're not seeing them Uh, doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people in here are kind of like in a loop, you know, it's like everyone's, I don't want to say everyone's doing the same thing, but like no one's really wanting to expand and they're really like kind of stuck on a, like a small town mindset, if you know what I'm saying. Like, uh, <laughs> yep. yeah. 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 We know what you're saying. So do you think yeah. that te- is kind of like a creative thing, maybe style choice or like just a work ethic or anything in particular? Uh, I don't, I feel like people, people here in, in this area are too stuck on impressing other people. And I feel like mm-hmm. they have, I'm not trying to take shots at anybody, but, you know, I feel like people yeah. have too big of egos, you know, like to want to make anything bigger. I don't know. Mm. Like they're, I don't know. They're too, I don't know what it is, like too confident or something that what they're doing is good enough. But um, yeah. I think, I think there needs to be more like unity in this area. Uh, that's was my, that's my opinion. Like, I feel like people should be more collaborative. If you want to build something, you got to make something bigger than just yourself. You know, that's my, that's my opinion. But um, yeah, I feel like yeah. definitely people need to get rid of their egos and they need to be more collaborative and yeah. that'll build more of a scene here in this area. Cause if you, I mean, there really isn't, there really isn't anything that I, I mean, anything booming, you know, like super special about this area, but yeah, that's, right. that's kind of my take on it. So how do you, how do you yourself kind of push past that? I guess you just, is that when you decided I got to start reaching out to other artists online yeah i realized that my like okay so i was working with people here i realized that my work really wasn't getting me anywhere yeah i wasn't like i'm satisfied with you know placements and stuff but i'm like sure as a producer you want more right like you want right. like yeah i can i could take this bigger so i kind of just totally like disregarded this like not i don't want to say i disregarded but i just kind of left the scene alone here for a little bit and i wanted bigger things so that's kind of where uh, like Seven Six Collective came from. I'm like, I wanted something bigger than just myself. I need like, mm-hmm. I'm thinking I need a team. I need more connections. And this is how we're going to get placements. And this is how we're going to branch out. 
So, okay. yeah, from there, I just kind of started, work, you know, connecting on the internet. Internet's a vast space of just endless knowledge. So you're like, I'm going to go look around, you know, I'm going to find people that uh, like kind of relate to or correlate to my sound or making something similar and I'm going to work with them. And that's how I'm going to, that's how I'm going to expand. Yeah. So. Okay. So obviously probably one of the easiest correlations people could make by looking at what you're doing is maybe, you know, like internet money um, or something similar. Was that kind of in your mind when you started making this or? Uh, so I didn't, I really didn't know about internet money until like a year ago. So I had kind of my collective already going and I'm like, okay, well, there's another producer group, you know, internet money. And um, yeah, I guess, I guess now that I look at it, they're, I don't want to say they're an inspiration, but I, I like what they're doing They're I respect them. You know, they're, they're putting on for a lot of producers, you know, a lot of people have come up because of them. So, uh, I, yeah, I kind of want to do something a little bit similar, but not necessarily like my plans for, uh, the whole collective is a lot, a lot bigger in the end, kind of what I'm, what I'm looking to get out of it. But, uh, yeah. Do you want to talk at all about that? Like your kind of longer term plans for the collective? Oh yeah. I, yeah, I guess I could go into that. So, uh, <laughs> as of, you know, as of right now, we're just, uh, like a, you know, a uh, producer collective. We have like our little artists that we work with and stuff, but uh, eventually, well, I mean, kind of now it's already turning into a business for us. I mean, we're looking to expand into other things as far as like fashion and, uh, you know, like graphic design and stuff like that. But as of right now, just because we're still kind of, you know, pretty small, that's what we're focus on, focusing on. But eventually, like I want to get us into, uh, you know, if we blow up and stuff like that, I want to get us into like actual businesses and stuff where we can... Uh, have multiple avenues of revenue, you know, so we can actually like fund our passion, you know, we could do music full time. But yeah, that's just kind of like what we have. And that's what we're going for right now. Okay. No, that's Thanks. awesome. How many members do you have right now? There's five of us, including me. Yeah. So there's five altogether. We had more, but you know, there's fallouts and stuff and just, you know, people not wanting to contribute. So I mean, we had to trim the roster a little bit, but there's five primary members right now. That seems hard, honestly, because, I mean, everybody has kind of their own goals, and it's probably hard to pick people who, who align with the oh, vision. Yeah. And oh, yeah, definitely. How do you find, how do you go about, you mentioned kind of picking based on style, but do you, do you then start to reach out to people that you find online? Can you talk through like how you, how you search for them and then kind of initially talk to them? Yeah, so I feel like my first thing is like I need to see what kind of person they are as far as like intentions and stuff because there's there's a lot of like no matter what you're you what you are like an artist or a producer there's people who only want you for opportunity you know so you have to be really selective about who you work with and stuff like that because people will use you you know it's people I've been used as a stepping stone before too like I've it's sure. happened to me firsthand you know so um, yeah you have to be I'm very selective you know we're all very selective we all like kind of I don't want to say we take votes, but we we I I kind of spread like if I find somebody that I think is could be like uh, very beneficial for the for the team or a good addition, like I everyone goes through kind of like a little review process of what we think, how good we think this person will be of an addition to the team or you know stuff like that. Okay, so on your on the Seven Six Collective Instagram page, there is like one of the highlights, and it says to like join or send a portfolio or whatever yeah. how many people have you actually selected that have like sent to the portfolio or how much of it is more just you finding somebody organically that you're like oh this person is someone that i think that we could mesh with yeah so we haven't picked up anybody yet but like like you said we're kind of just we're reviewing our submissions like at this at this time and just kind of okay. going through people that we we think would be a good fit you know because I mean, we've got, we've got, you know, a lot of submissions, but it's more so we're just being like very, very selective about the process. Cause it's, this is like a, like I said, it's becoming like a full-time business and we want people that, that are going to take it serious, you know, and they're actually willing to contribute. So, yeah. You've done portfolio selections in the past, right? People submitting before uh, have, did that come into, I mean, did you get any people added to the team through that? Uh, like when we first, first started. We haven't really mm -hmm. done any, you know, we have really haven't okay. added any new members within the, like the last year. So we're, gotcha. we're just now that now that we're kind of like, you know, starting to pick up a little bit of steam, 
we're starting to get a lot more people interested in, you know, joining our, our team. So yeah, we have to be very selective about that. So where are the other members uh, located right now? So um, I have my brother, Leo from, uh, he's not really my brother, but he's like brother to me. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he's in Atlanta. And then I have everyone else who's in the Netherlands. There's Valley, LRS, and uh, Hoodie White. And they're all kind of like in the same area. They all kind of know each other. So yeah, that's that's just us. And okay. then obviously me, me in Idaho right now. So Okay. And would you say that that has been really helpful because like the people who are in these other areas, have they been able to connect with artists that like maybe you wouldn't have been able to just because they're yeah, exactly. In? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. So uh, my guys in the Netherlands are working with, you know, that Netherlands artists. And then we all kind of act as a and as well. Like we go out and search for artists. And if I feel like I can't pertain to this guy's sound, I'll send him over to one of my other guys. And if they have the same sound, but you know, I'm like, dude, you should work with him, you know? Mm-hmm. and it, it just builds connections for everybody in the end you know right. we're, we're really kind of a, we're really we'll go ahead luke oh i was just gonna say you're building a network basically and like yeah, yeah, it, the ability yeah, yeah. to to connect people exactly yeah do you guys do like frequent phone calls and just talk through like what do you guys want to work on like here's the plan here's how we can execute it or is it very much more like individual can you can you talk at all about that? Just like how you guys come up with plans and stuff. So we have a, we have like a group chat, obviously where we all, you know, communicate ideas across and stuff, but uh, every like week or every two weeks, we'll have like a group call where we can discuss um, plans for the week or, you know, plans for the month or what are, what is our goals? Like, what are we trying to achieve? But um, like pretty much every day we're always in contact, you know, like, you know, just working on things for the team or working on things for the Instagram page or the YouTube, you know, we're just trying to keep things rolling at all, you know, at all times, which is kind of hard. Like we don't want to be complacent. We just want to keep, keep the ball rolling pretty much. But yeah, we, we have our calls like every week, every other week where we talk like what our goals are going to be, you know, for the end of the year or where we're looking at to be a year from now, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So now how does it work typically when, you guys want to like collab is there a lot of collaboration between all of you guys as producers or is it more just the sense that you guys all network together uh yeah so we work we work collectively to just like an actual producing you know sharing loops and okay. midis whatever yeah yeah so we do that pretty often um i think i have more beats together than i do alone to be honest like mm-hmm. just cuz we're always mm-hmm. you know sharing new stuff together or if we both want, or if two of us want to get a placement with one guy, I'll be like, dude, let me do the drums or I'll do the melody. You do the drums, you know, just, we like to keep everything together. We're really like kind of built like on a brotherhood kind of thing. Like we all want to help each other out, you know, in any way possible. So, yeah. So this is, this is a boring question, but how do you guys manage all those files? Do you have like some cloud server and you put all your beats yeah. on there or okay google drive google drive and <laughs> retransfer and you know hard hard drive disks and all kinds of stuff man okay <laughs> sounds like a, a mess hopefully you guys found a good way to keep it organized because my yeah. own hard drive is a mess and it's just me and <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> so. yeah i feel you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a ton of organization. So you you might not want to talk about this, and I apologize if you don't, but in Internet Money, there is kind of the idea that, like, Taz is the head, and um, he, since he is the one on top, and he does have more to do with almost kind of the getting everyone else out there and connecting them with people, he does take kind of some portions, and that's how they're able to keep running the yes. internet money house is that kind of something similar that you guys do or is it no, everybody no. okay everybody everybody gets their own their own take that's that's, that's how i feel it, it should be you know like taz has got what he's got going on and i'm doing what i got going on i feel yep. everybody deserves what they put in you know you you put it or you get out what you put in you know kind of thing mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah okay awesome do you do you handle a lot of like business the business side of it as far as like split sheets or just like working with new artists and discussing that kind of thing or is that all like shared responsibility um i'd say it's shared responsibility but at the same the same time i like do manage all the business side of things like 
if I need to get in contact with an artist for someone else, I'll do it. You know, I'll discuss mm-hmm. like how much they're going to pay, pay, you know, for royalties or, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm pretty much, I pretty much run the business side of everything. Yeah. I would say that. Okay. okay. So, oh, go ahead, Luke. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was going to say, do you, do you enjoy that side of it or, I mean, how do you balance that with the music side too? It, it's pretty fun to be honest. I don't know. Like, I don't even think of myself as a producer anymore. I feel like I'm more going towards being in, like an entrepreneur, you know, like mm. I mean, I'm getting into like marketing and stuff like that. So I'm really trying to, you know, build, build the brand, you know, and like start the movement is what I'm doing right now. It's what I'm, I'm more focused on than actual producing, you know? So, okay. You're, you're talking about split sheets and all this stuff that's super awesome and like is music to my ears because I love all that stuff. But having worked with people from here so far, I have not heard that term come up once working with anybody. So um, I'm just kind of wondering, was that something that you were seeing too when you were working with local artists? Was just no one was really talking about that stuff or? Yeah, so I guess a lot of people, I don't know, it's like, this is what I'm saying. Like people are like still in this small town mindset. Like they don't want to get into like the business side of things, you know? So mm. usually it would just be like, um, if they wanted to be, uh, like a beat for me, it'd be 50 bucks. And that was it. You know, I never got to see any royalties. And um, that was back in the day too. Like when I was just, you know, young selling exclusives for $50, I'd just give them, they'd give me the the money and I'd give them the beat. And that's kind of like the, that's it. There was no splits. Mm-hmm. And as far as royalties or, publishing or none of that but as i've gotten bigger and worked with you know different people business is like more in the talks now you know like we're talking okay uh i'll give you this song for you know exclusive whatever and we'll do 50 50 you know you did the recording and the engineering and i produced the beat we'll go right down the middle you know so is that something that you recommend um producers maybe from uh, Boise start to get into or from any small town who may be listening yeah. just so that they kind of start that habit early and yeah I, I definitely recommend okay. it yeah yeah okay awesome how I guess when you first started selling beats do you ha- looking back on that now do you have any tips for how to approach that conversation as far as like price and just like bringing it up <laughs> with the artist or yeah anything uh, you'd yeah, say. yeah so i guess like when i first started out i wasn't really aware that i could make money off of it It was more just trying to get the music out you know mm, yeah and then like eventually as i felt myself getting better and i felt more confident in my work i'm like okay i think i'm gonna start pricing you guys for my music and i'd bring it up and like when we'd be in the studio together i'd be like all right dude like this is what the song is going to be and they look at me a little funny you know like why are you charging me for music but I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident in my work now, so I'm going to start charging. Mm-hmm. But yeah, eventually, like once you start building that kind of like staple, that staple name or whatever, when your people start become like knowing who you are, um, the, the price talks come automatically. You don't really even have to initiate them anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's part of that small town mindset then that's maybe keeping people from wanting to have these necessary conversations then exactly yeah okay. that's why i feel do you think experience. i mean it, I, this might have i'm not asking you to speculate for artists but do you think it's like just not being aware or kind of not being educated on that or do you think it is wanting to have a producer who they can work with together for just like because they don't want to pay or they want to work with a producer exclusively and have like come up together kind of thing um i'd have to say it was your third one more so just like okay they want someone that they can have in their corner at all times you know Mm -hmm. but it's yeah i don't know there's a a lot of you know speculation in that yeah yeah that's just my for for my experience okay yeah i definitely have had some people approach me and want me to be their like exclusive producer and I was like like I can't give the beats to anyone else and they're like no I was like what? well let's, <laughs> let's talk about it for a minute because I think for me if there's an artist that I really believe in I'm willing to invest that in initially what are your thoughts on that are there artists you work with knowing they can't afford a hundred dollars or three hundred dollars exclusive or whatever but they'll give us back end and we can kind of try and develop them as an artist. 
Yeah, yeah. So I actually have that going on right now. Like, there's someone that I work with exclusively. I mean, me and him, we both believe in each other, you know, and we're we're trying to get that that uh kind of like Juice World Nick Mira relationship going, where we you know we build each other up together, and then eventually we'll share the same like limelight or was a spotlight. But um, right. yeah, I I I think to an extent there's there's people who are you know, genuinely wanting to work with you and you're wanting to work with them and you guys want to do this together. And then there's those people that just want you as their exclusive producer and they're just going to milk you for beats, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So can, can you talk a little bit about differentiating between the two or how you can find or attract the, the artists that align with you and like with your sound and just with your work ethic and all of that, that you know you would potentially want to develop with um so let's see i i like to go out like this is am i going to sound a little bit corny but i i like to show love you know to people you know just i think it's cool you know to show people that you like their work i mean there's nothing you don't lose anything in showing you know someone that mm -hmm. you like their work or whatever but uh i like i like to show love to people and you know if they should love back to you know show love back to me then and we ended up you know working on something then i feel like uh you know why not just go for it i mean it's there's respect on both sides you know and eventually i'm pretty sure if they start you know bringing in income or whatever they'd want to you know split it with you or they see that you're working you're doing this work for for them for free so yeah mm, yeah so when you were going along then on your path of being a producer how did you start to break that small town mindset then that you're talking about where it's like okay i'm going to start getting my music out to these bigger artists bigger audiences like what would your advice be to someone who's wanting to try and do that so what really broke me away from the small town mindset was uh so i i went i go to college up north in uh, moscow i go to u of i mm -hmm. and i started to realize like like these these guys really aren't doing much for themselves you know just the people that i were i was working with i'm like they're kind of just like i said earlier they're stuck in this like loop and i'm like i can I can be bigger than this, you know. I I can I can I can go out and explore. Like the internet is my resource, you know. There's so many people out there that don't have, you know, good producers or whatever. So I'm like, you know what? I can I can expand this. I can go out. So I just you know spend time on the internet, just listening to a bunch of small town people, you know, from different areas all over the, mm. the U S. and even world. And I'm just like, this is this is the way to go. Like this is how I'm gonna I'm gonna get out there. You know, I'm gonna just work with whoever I thought was dope and that's just that's what I started doing and then I realized like I'm making more noise leaving this this area than I am staying in it you know so mm. yeah okay yeah because I think that's one of the things that I see people talk about a lot here that is kind of confusing to me is they all say like you know I really want to put on for Idaho and I want like you know Boise on the map and all this stuff and it's like well that's great and they want to keep it really like Idaho centric. I don't understand why they wouldn't want to like maybe do a feature with someone out of state though, or like maybe, you know, work with a producer from like an Oregon or a California or whatever it may be, you know, just cause it seems to have benefited you so much just to step beyond those state lines. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I feel like if you're going to, if you're going to make it about Idaho, definitely what you said, you should expand out. Like if you think about it, you blow up somewhere else, you can bring all that, all that back to Idaho and invested in Idaho and Idaho will start to build a scene, you know, like you're not, I mean, I'm not trying to say that you won't get it by building Idaho, but we've been, no one's done it in like whoever knows how long, you know, no one's really put on a name for Idaho. Like Idaho doesn't have a sound. You look at LA, LA has a sound. Miami has a sound. New York has a sound, you know, Seattle's starting to build a sound. And then, you know, Idaho is a pretty big city. I mean, you guys got like what, 200,000 people. And there really isn't yeah. like a scene there, but I definitely feel like you need to, you need to just like get out, you know, stop, like get rid of the ego. If you know, the artist has an ego or whatever, they just need to, like I said, collaborate. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. I, I think, do you have any ideas for what that might look like? Cause you did talk about, you know, putting egos aside, collaborating together with other local artists, what do you think that might look like more trying to do events or just like hitting people up on Instagram and sending them loops and stuff like that? Or do you think it's, 
Um, do you think it takes kind of developing yourself outside first and then coming back? Do you think that's like a necessary yeah. step to, yeah. to be able to bring so, that back? Like Sorry said, for, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I think so. I definitely think so. Like, I mean, that's kind of what I, what I'm intending to do a little bit too, is I, I want to build out, you know, out of state. And then I don't see the reason why I would not want to be like a founding, you know, developer and having created a sound in Idaho or giving them life as far as like artistic, you know, whatever. But I feel like, I feel like definitely leaving for a little bit, developing whatever, and then you can bring that back and other people can see what's going on and other people will want to try it too. And it'll, that's where you create your scene, you know? Mm. Okay. So also I've been noticing that you guys have really ramped up on the YouTube side of things. You guys have been putting out a lot of uh, videos and stuff. Is that kind of your main way to like connect with the producer community? Um, do you see it? Is that, is that kind of the reason why you guys have started ramping that up so hard? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's our main priority. I would say right now is our YouTube because it's, it's crazy. Like we've only been doing it for like a year and a half now, almost two years. And I don't want to say our growth is immense, but it's, it's pretty dope because we've just connected with so many, so many other people just through YouTube, you know, like mm. I used to think that it was like, you needed to be, you know, active. I mean, you still do need to be active on Instagram, but you, I thought you needed to be active on all kinds of other, you know, like social media platforms. But mm. I've, I've just realized, you know, how, how useful YouTube is. And I think it's important that you, you're active, extremely active on there as a producer. Cause uh, you can actually, you know, you can build up really fast. I've seen people start a YouTube and then, you know, in a couple months, they're already at like 50,000 subscribers, you know, and they have a fan base, people following them and supporting them. So I think it's super essential to have as, as an artist or a producer. Well, yeah, because like you, like you, I mean, this isn't like a slight in any way or anything, but I mean, your Instagram is like 700 followers or whatever. But then right. once you go to your YouTube, I mean, it's like you guys are coming up on 2000 followers and thousands yeah. of plays on all the videos. So, yeah, yeah, it's really impressive. Yeah. Can you take us into a little bit into your meetings that you guys have every couple of weeks about what kind of videos we want to put on YouTube and kind of your YouTube strategy at all? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, our strategy at the moment right now is we're kind of, we do these like milestone kind of things. So we'll drop, you know, we'll drop tutorials and stuff like that, but we're always cooking up like loop kits, MIDI kits, you know, drum kits, and we give those away for free. You know, producers love free stuff. But um, <laughs> we use those, we use those kind of as like a, like as a bait a little bit, you know, we, uh, we'll put those out like every, let's see, every hundred subscribers we'll get, we'll throw out a free kit and people will get attracted to that a kit. They'll subscribe. And the next thing you know, you're at your next milestone. We'll have that next kit ready. And it just, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a, like a pyramid kind of thing, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah, that's, so that's you're, kind of what. You're running like I, a click funnels type almost like. Uh, some of these guys are talking about, I know it's really big with like Anno Domini and like, uh, I can't remember, Legion Beats, that's right. Um, where like you create this product for free, you know, that you're wanting people to have. And then, so you're drawing them in and then you're having them subscribe to your channel. And then, so you just get, get the cyclical pattern of people just keep coming back and like, Right. Wanting and then more, they, and then they, and then they go on. And then that too is they also benefit off the tutorials too, you know, cause mm -hmm. like we're, we're trying not to do things that have already been done. Obviously it's going to be hard to do that, but it's slightly working for us. Like we noticed I'm really invested in like the West coast sound right now, like what's going on in LA. And I noticed that not a lot of people are really sharing tips on that. So a lot of our fan base is, you know, from like the LA area and stuff like that. And yeah, so we'll make these tutorials and then, they see how, like how our beats are and they want our, you know, our MIDI kits or loop kits, whatever. So they go get that and then they go watch our videos and it, it, it just works out, you know, for us. Yeah. So are you really growing then uh, like producers or are you, or are, the, are these videos also drawing in like artists and stuff as well that are hearing the beats and being like, Hey, these guys are really dope. Yeah. So I've actually, I picked up most everybody that I work with as far as like being an artist right now has came off the YouTube channel. And then also like my personal channel doing like, you know, the type beats here and there. That's where I picked up pretty much everyone that I work, I'm working with at the moment. 
Okay. I, th- I think it kind of sets you guys apart just because it's like quality content, it's consistent content. People show up to your page and see like, oh, dang, you know, this person isn't like, they post a few beats and then a couple months go by and you don't see anything from them. So I think that can make a big difference for some an artist looking for uh, somebody who's as serious as they are that they want to work with. Right, yeah. So how do you guys decide then when you're making the videos of who is going to do which video? Like, do you guys take turns then with each person? Like, like you're like, okay, you're this week and then, you know, I do the tutorial next week or how do you decide that? Yeah. I, I mean, I would say that, so, I mean, I'm pretty much run like all the, all the tutorials just because I, I feel like I can knock them out, you know, in a more timely manner than everyone else. Cause I have, I have my, my guy, Leo, who does tutorials, but his are more like uh is are more based on uh, just keeping keeping attention longer, you know, whereas I'm really getting down to like the points and tips and tricks, you know, that you could add into your to your beats. But um, for, for the most part, I pretty much run everything. But we were we used to be kind of like on an alternating schedule, but it's kind of like whenever uh, he can get to a tutorial or someone else can get to tutorial, go do it because everyone kind of knows their part. Like we have everyone working on different things at one time so we can just, you know, build that content to have it ready to go for, you know, when we need it. But yeah, for the most part, I just pretty much run the tutorials and everyone else will like be creating their kits or, or, you know, reaching out to other artists to work or something like that. We just, we, we like to keep everything rolling at all times kind of thing. So if I have to take the load for tutorials, I'm totally fine doing that because I actually enjoy, you know, sharing all of, you know, so it's mm-hmm. cool for me. Okay. Awesome. And I also noticed that, you, I believe, have been doing the graphics also for yeah. a lot of the drops and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So how important is it, would you say, for like producers in small towns to kind of collect almost this, you know, big old mix of uh, like just stuff that they know how to do, whether it be like kind of some graphic design and some video editing and like all that. How important has that been for you? I think it's pretty essential because in it, it, it's one less job that you need someone else to do for you, you know, cause there's, there's dudes on YouTube right now that are run, run everything by themselves. You know, they produce, they do their own editing, they do their own graphic design, they do their own marketing. You know, I think it's, I don't see why you wouldn't want to have those kind of, you know, tips in your arsenal or how to do things in your arsenal. And that, that one thing too is like a, uh, like graphic design. I feel like it's, it's important, kind of important for you to know how to do that too, because you can invest that into your branding. You know, people are like, okay, this guy's graphics are really cool. So his, his beats must be really good, you know? So it's, it's kind of like a, not a clickbait kind of thing, but you know, it draws attention. Okay. Are you still in school? Uh, or yeah, I'm still in school. Yeah, I'm still okay. in school, but Cause, the whole quarantine cause... and everything. <laughs> right. Well, right. Of course. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, like, that's a lot to do, right? Oh yeah. How, teaching yourself lot. graphic design, managing the business side, having these this communication with these other producers and while still making your own music and stuff. How do you decide what to work on and and do you approach it from like any content is better than no content or do you focus a lot on like a direction for the brand when you're getting ideas together? Does that make sense? Um, yeah, so let's see. So like, so yeah, school is like a, like a full-time job for me, obviously, cause right. I'm always in school. I have a, I have a bio, I'm studying biology right now. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a pretty hefty major, Yeah. but, um, I just, I, I try to balance everything out, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll get school, I'll get school done these days and I'll have the rest of the week to work on the collective, you know, and that's pretty much how I, I keep it all moving. It's, it gets really tough sometimes and I'm like pretty much always busy, but I, I, I enjoy being busy, you know, so that's kind of how I balance everything out. Yeah, Do you kind good. of have like a timeline in your head or like some goal in your head of when you're like, and maybe not because you want to go and do your biology, but are you kind of like, okay, if I can get to like this amount of money coming in or whatever, you know, then maybe I can drop school and like go, and just do producing full time is that kind of something uh, that you have um that's that's pretty much 
exactly what I have. So I using like kind of university as like a what is it like a, a time period to, to allow me to get to where I want to go, you know. And then I have I have one more year left of of uh, university. So I I hope by by the time I'm done, like I have everything that I I need, you know. To I don't I mean I'll have my bio degree like as a as a backup, you know, in case something goes south. But producing is pretty much what I what I plan to do for the rest of my life, you know. And then eventually. I'll invest, you know, everything I make off producing into other things, like I said earlier, so I can have multiple avenues of revenue coming in so I can just, you know, stay afloat. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's something hard. that... Go ahead, Luke. Oh, I was just going to say, that's that's hard to balance knowing something you don't want to do, but you're, you're having to stick with it while <laughs> you're trying to build what you do want to do. So uh, yeah. <laughs> respect for that because... It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, dude. I mean, I I do enjoy like science, you know. That's that's fun to me. Yeah. So I I did pick a major that I do enjoy, in case mm-hmm. you know something just doesn't work out. But uh, yeah, that producing is pretty much what I'm I'm going for. Okay. Now you've mentioned multiple times while we've been talking these uh kind of multiple uh streams of revenue, and I know that that's something that maybe a, not a lot of people think about especially if they have the small town mindset i think it's almost kind of hard to envision that you kind of are just like oh i put my music out and my music pays me like what are some of these other you know revenue streams that you've been able to find and have been able to benefit you um there's not really too many i mean i sell my like drum kits and stuff but i mean that's not like large amounts of money and obviously doing YouTube, like monetization and stuff like that, we're really trying to grow that so we can make that kind of like one of our big kind of, you know, money makers as of right now. And then obviously there's like royalties coming in from like streams and stuff like that, but it's not super crazy because obviously we don't have like millions of plays and stuff. We're in the thousands still. But um, as of right now, I just kind of like, I do like, I do work on the sometimes, like I work sometimes, you know, I work in the summer times. That'll keep me afloat. So I can just focus on music. I don't have to worry about paying for school because I have my scholarships and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. as of right now, we're still kind of working. We're working for that big, that big revenue to come in. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, I think though, like setting yourself up for that. Like you said, putting together kits and, and getting your um, back end set up to be able to collect royalties and stuff like that. It's, smart because down the road too once you're building more once you have artists in your arsenal who are doing bigger numbers or the ones you're working with now are growing um you have kind of that infrastructure set up is there yeah. anything you would recommend as far as like resources for maybe kind of setting up kind of the royalty collection or getting a um, website set up how do you go about researching i guess something you have no idea how to do yeah so i spent a lot of time on the internet but there's uh distro kid you know where uh, i'm pretty sure you guys have heard of distro kid before right mm-hmm. yeah yeah and then there's like there's bmi and ascap where you can get your you can sign up for publishing through your social security and everything and that's where your they, it'll go and collect your royalties kind of for you but um yeah those are pretty much that's everything that i i use you know to make sure okay. that i i get what i I need. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. So then what are kind of some of the things that people should be on the lookout for coming from the seven, six collective? Like what's the next big goal that you guys have all of you together? Um, There really isn't like the next big goal is just continuing to grow. You know, we want to become like a staple and like an online producer community like we want we want to be a staple we i'm not trying to say we want to be the next internet money or the next um like split mind or you know whatever whoever's big producing on the internet but we want to be a staple you know somebody that somebody that you know everybody knows or is aware of you know that's pretty much our our goal at the moment and then eventually as we get bigger and bigger we'll get into our other you know avenues of interest okay and do you work exclusively then off of online with other with your artists or have you been able to travel and like go work with them in person and stuff in like california or wherever yeah at the moment no everything is just through online 
It's all yeah, online. I haven't really been. Yeah, it's all online. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And do you feel like that's put you at like a disadvantage? Do you like wish that you could go down there or are you happy with just that you're able to work with them at all? Or what's kind of your feeling on that? Um, so yeah, I do wish, I do wish I could be like in the studio with them. Cause I feel like I, we'd be way more productive, you know, being mm-hmm. together because you have two minds working together at the same time and you guys are able to knock out so much more. Whereas like over the internet, you kind of send out like a beat pack and if they pick a beat from there, they pick a beat from there. But I feel like once, when you're in person, like you can get a lot more done. You guys are just both like engaged and you clicking, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot easier too. You can kind of read the room and see what type of stu- music they're feeling and maybe choose new beats or something, new melody yeah. ideas based on that. So do yeah, you, I prefer is there, producing like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Is there um, a time where you things kind of clicked together for you that you knew this was what you wanted to do full time and like really pick up the business side and and run with it? Or has that always kind of been what you were planning to do since you started? Yeah, I would say so. Like I like I feel like if you invested this much time into something, then you you should go the whole way, you know, no matter what it be, mm-hmm. like the business side, marketing side, whatever. Like I in high school, I kind of had like an idea. I'm like, okay, like I've invested like six years of my life into making music. And I think I should, you know, go the whole way. But, and that'll be like learning everything, you know, but mm. I've always kind of had that goal in mind, you know, to go, go big with it. And then, so you said that was in high school and then you started the collective a couple of years later. Is that right? Yeah. I started the collective like my first year of college. Okay. So, yeah. Do you have any, I mean, kind of looking back, do you have any advice if you were, if you were able to give yourself advice from now, anything you would say to yourself as far as like really lean into this direction, like YouTube or really like you need to find a way to work more hours or, you know, anything that comes to mind? To be honest with you, I had no plan. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. And I, and I <laughs> mentioned that, I mentioned that to my guys and like, we had no idea what we were doing. Like, when we hit 1K, I was like, it was like a like a bittersweet moment for all of us because, you know, like none of us knew what we were really doing. So mm. for us to like just achieve that off of just like winging it, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it was it was cool. And now that we're growing kind of like kind of fast, we're just like, this is working for us. Let's keep doing it, you know? So, yeah, I really had I really had no plan. I just said I was going to do it. And that's what I did, you know? That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty typical. <laughs> Most people have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> I can relate to yeah. that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So Luke here actually started um the Boise Beatmakers and that it's been going pretty good, you know. I think how many people do you usually have we been pulling in when we have that? Uh, the last one, the last meeting we had in person was actually, I think, 20 or 25 people. And it, it that was the biggest one for sure. But it's grown people. every week. We got like a couple more people showing up. So that was exciting because I had no idea there was 25 people producing in the area. And like there's more that have kind of reached out to me. Just, yeah, it's I been think, pretty I think I only know like five Idaho producers and you guys are, I, well, you guys are two of them. <laughs> the only other one I know is the only other, no, other one I know is uh, AC and Marco, right? Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like they kind of come out of the woodwork, and like you said, like there's no events, there's not that much going on to bring people. I think together, um, so yeah. that I think a lot of them are hiding and just kind of doing their bedroom thing. And someone might have a channel that's like doing well or something on YouTube, and how am I gonna know unless they say? Boise exactly. somewhere right, yeah right exactly yeah yeah so if that had been something that had been around when uh maybe you were still you know looking Coming to up, yeah. Could, yeah connect with people locally um what's like I guess advice then what would you be looking for if you went to these to this Boise beat makers what would you be trying to get out of it or meet or just what what would you be doing definitely look look for other people to work with you know that's the biggest thing and like i i realized just from producing myself that i can do everything myself like having a having a team really helps me a lot because it keeps you in check you know it makes you like okay like these guys rely on me and i rely on them you know we keep each other together we keep the the mission going you know so i feel like 
working with other people really helps a lot because you just can benefit off of each other you know it helps everyone out in the end all right um i don't know luke you got any more oh i mean i'm sure i've got more hold on let me look <laughs> i had like a list of some things i wanted to talk about That's funny. um are you still do you work on music every day oh yeah dude i was i was making beats before you guys called me okay <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I had heard that so i i watched your interview i've seen it twice actually now your interview you did with ac delgado i hate that um, interview, it, <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's a good interview man like i, I, I learned I, a lot and... i was super young i was like i think 17 or 18 when i made that interview and i was okay. really really ignorant dude so i like i kind of cringe watching it now because i'm like i was an idiot you know but it, it's whatever I mean, we we're all like varying levels of idiots throughout our lives. I feel like so. I think just being able to like, um, I don't know, push through things that you're hung up on, yeah. and kind of have an open mind moving forward is huge. But yeah, um, uh, yeah. So, what is like success? I mean, can you kind of define success? I guess we we talked a little bit about it, but for you, what is like five years or ten years down the road? What is the, what does your day look like? What is that? Um, a, a, your, when you're successful uh, and doing the things that you love, what does a day look like in your life? Do you think? Well, that's a Paint us a question. picture. Yeah, <laughs> Are you living in Idaho? You're living in LA. You're going to the studio. You're just hanging out and live streaming and not even worrying about getting placements or you know I, what is I think I I'm not going back to Cali for sure there's too much drama over there okay I don't know I think I'd, I'd either be in uh, Idaho Oregon or Washington in 10 years you know I probably have like a like a nice house you know I have a home studio and everything and I have my team around me still that's kind of what I envision and we're just you know still working on the same goal we had when we were 2019 you know yeah so, do you yeah. do you want to continue to develop artists or do you like doing tutorials or is there kind of a favorite part of the process for you right now? As of right now, it's, you know, um, the tutorials, I get a lot of joy out of that. And I learn yeah. a lot too, you know, cause, uh, if I'm wanting to do something new, I, I gotta, you know, continue being a student of the game and understanding mm -hmm. everything. And then I'll be able to relay, relay that information to whoever watches us, you know, but, um, yeah, I enjoy the tutorials yeah. and then developing, you know, whoever I'm working with right now. So, yeah. Do you, when you're coming up with tutorials, are you like studying other, other producers or artists or how do you kind of, how do you learn yourself? I guess. Uh, I listen to a lot of music, a lot of music. Yeah. Like I'm always listening to music. So I'm always like picking up on things that I hear in like the mixes or, you know, just the production itself. But I don't, I don't really watch other tutorials, I guess. I, mm. I just kind of listen through sound, I guess. And that's how I kind of pick everything up. But because everything is kind of very cohesive nowadays, I would mm -hmm. say. But yeah, yeah, I just listen to a lot of music and that's kind of where I pick up my influences or if I want to teach that in a tutorial or something, you know, so. Okay, yeah. gotcha, that makes sense. And do you recommend, um, I don't know how you operate day to day, but do you have like a schedule that you stick to? And then do you, would you recommend that other people try to do that, like a daily schedule? Um, I guess, I would just recommend doing whatever works for you. But what I like to do is uh, in the mornings, I'll leave that, you know, for because I have school. So I still do school work in the mornings. But in the in the afternoons, I save all that time for uh, tutorials or talking with the team or producing, you know, whatever. But that's that's usually how I run things. And that's what I found to be most efficient for me, you know. So, yeah. Is there something that for the tutorials, is there something that kind of gave you confidence? Like I have something to teach people or even just like, I don't know, like I, I've put together videos and it's easy to be really self-conscious about like you, how you're acting even on camera oh, or oh like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still like, I'm still super um, like self-conscious, like, but it is something uh -huh. you have to, you have to fight through dude. Like it, it's what it is. Like sometimes I'm like, I sounded so stupid in that tutorial. But I'm like, I'm just gonna put it out anyway, because you know, then I'll never put it out. But yeah, yeah, it's just something you have to you have to fight through for sure. Do you feel like it gets easier, or you you get better with practice? Oh yeah, definitely. I remember like when I when I first started making videos, I'm like, this is so bad, you know. I'm just like, this is just bad. 
but now I'm just starting to like relax into it. I try not to like talk too much or, you know, overthink it, just kind of do it, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's almost like when you're trying to put out your first beats, you just start oh, overthinking man. everything and you don't want to even put them out. Cause you're like, no, I, this is stupid. Like this sounds dumb, like, or whatever, yeah. but just have to force your way through it. Exactly. So yeah, it's like self-confidence and so the flip side self-sabotage i feel like is a huge piece of like being able to get out of your head and be successful i think with music is just finding a way to either have confidence or just like not care or just know i gotta put in this work if it's gonna work out i just gotta i gotta make it work until it works it's i like, feel like I, I feel like a lot of people too feel like they're gonna be validated by someone's opinion you know where it's you should be validated by your your own work and how much you put into it you know yep. yes so, yeah totally totally so how did you personally overcome that then you talked about when you started uh asking the artists that you were working with to start you know paying and to do yeah. split sheets and whatnot how did you get to that point because that's even something that i still struggle with you know if i've been working with someone for a while i kind of i like feel weird about even bringing it up and I get self-conscious. How did you get to that point? What's your advice? Yeah, I don't know, dude. I just, I guess I, I just became like just really just confident. You know, I'm just like, I, I've seen how much I've grown, you know, and I'm just like, I have to start being confident in myself. Like no matter what, like no matter what people are going to say, your beats are, your beats suck, whatever, you know, it, it's whatever, but you just have to brush it off, you know, and just, you have to really, um, not invest in yourself, but just be really like confident in yourself, you know, just no matter what, it's just something you have to do regardless of anything, you know? Well, so I guess kind of wrapping this up here then, what are um, just some things that you want people to be on the lookout for or how can they connect with you? Um, just let them know. Okay. So uh, yeah, you can connect with me through uh, my Instagram. That's where I'm most active and Twitter as well, both at, at seven, six, and you can connect to the actual team at seven, six collective on Instagram or YouTube. And yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much is everything. That, is that spelled out seven, six with, Oh no, sorry. That's, that's, that's numbers. So seven, six, okay. like the seven and six collective is our team page. And then my okay. personal um, Instagram and Twitter is at seven, six and that's spelled out. S E V and S I X. Okay. I'll put it all up here next to your picture anyways when I upload this. But all right. Um, Dre, I wanna say thank you so much for yeah. stopping by and talking to us. Um yeah, thank you for having me, man. Appreciate it a lot. Yeah, no, it's been awesome. I think you've uh given us a lot to think about. I also liked how you brought up our big buzzword that we use a lot uh without even like us <laughs> mentioning it the small town mindset we talk about that so much so that was cool to hear you to yeah. hear you bring that up yeah, yeah for sure really excited man to see the channel growing and looking forward to seeing what's next for you guys so keep, yeah. keep going yeah for sure it's thank you very man. helpful and appreciate that a lot yeah all right well we'll talk to you later then thank you so much all right good call yeah, yeah. Right. Sure. yeah. Later. Take care. Bye.